Good morning children. Welcome to class 10 biology. Today we are going to study about life processes. What are life processes? Processes that enable a living organism to survive are called life processes. They help the organism in growth and maintenance. All living organism, whether it's plants or animals, need energy for this. This energy is provided by food. Now this is either prepared by their own like in the green plants or by obtaining food from outside. The food that is obtained is broken down to release energy which either requires oxygen or in the absence of oxygen. This whole process of breaking down of food, its digestion and the release of energy produces waste which needs to be removed. Now, in the unicellular organisms like amoeba, you have already studied earlier, this whole process is very simple and takes place by diffusion. While in multicellular organism like we human beings, it requires an elaborate system of organs and organ system. Now, life processes in multicellular organisms include nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion. Nutrition is required for obtaining nutrients from food and its assimilation in the body. Respiration produces energy from the food. Transportation transports the nutrients and oxygen that has to be transported to each and every part of the body. Excretion carries out the waste that has to be removed from the body. Now let's start with nutrition. Nutrition in all the living organisms consists of two types, autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition. You have already had known these things earlier. What are autotrophic nutrition? Those nutrition in which organisms produce their food on their own like the green plants and blue-green algae. Now let's focus on autotrophic nutrition in plants. It is by photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? You know the production of food by the green plants in the presence of carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and of course chlorophyll. So their requirements of the photosynthesis includes carbon dioxide which comes from the stomata in the leaves, water that comes from the soil through the roots, chlorophyll is present in the mesophyll cells of the leaf in the chloroplast. Sunlight provides the light energy. Now here, let's see the transverse section of a leaf. Leaf is the place where photosynthesis takes place in the green plants. Now this shows mesophyll cells. Now mesophyll cells contain chloroplast. Chloroplast are cell organelles that have chlorophyll pigments which trap solar energy. The leaf section also shows small pores at the lower epidermis called the stomata that allows carbon dioxide to enter the mesophyll cells. Now let's have a look at the chloroplast structure. Now it is a double membrane structure. It has tag like structure called grana and a ground substance called stroma. Now the photosynthesis takes place in this chloroplast. It consists of two steps a light reaction and a dark reaction. The light reaction takes place in the grana of the chloroplast, the stack like structure which you have seen, where the solar energy is converted into chemical energy of ATP. Here itself, water is also split to release oxygen, while the dark reaction takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. Dark reaction doesn't mean it takes place in dark, it means it does not require light energy. The Chemical energy produced from the light reaction is utilized in the dark reaction. It takes place in the chloroplast where this chemical energy of ATP is used to reduce carbon dioxide to carbohydrate that is production of glucose. Thus glucose is later on stored as starch in the leaf. Desert plants close their stomata during the day. Then how do they perform photosynthesis? Desert plants take up carbon dioxide at night and prepare an intermediate which is acted by light energy absorbed by chlorophyll during the day. 
This is how they perform photosynthesis even when the stomata is closed during the day. Now let's have a look at the structure of stomata and their role in photosynthesis. Stomata are tiny pores present in the lower epidermis of the leaf. Look at the diagram here. Gaseous exchange takes place through these pores. Stomata also release excess of water by transpiration. The opening and closing of stomata is regulated by the guard cells surrounding it. The guard cells are in turn surrounded by subsidiary cells. The guard cells swell when water moves into it and causes the stomatal pore to open. When the guard cells lose water, they shrink and causes the closure of stomata. Thanks children. In the next video, we will discuss nutrition in animals.